Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're talking about pseudo classes and pseudo elements. Uh, what they are, how to use them, and how to distinguish between the two. Uh, I've got a code pen here, we're going to jump in and look at an example. Before I do that, if you find yourself enjoying the video, feel free to click that subscribe button below. Uh, change the alert bell icon to all as well, and you'll get updates for future videos. Sorry about that. All right, let's jump in. Um, right, let's start with pseudo classes, I think. So a pseudo class allows us to refine our selector more based on maybe the state of an element or where it is within the document tree. You know, something that's not what the element is, you know, what type of element. If we look at a normal selector, say, say um, let me just create a h2 here and if we want to select that we can say right we want the type h2 and we want to set its background to a particular color here uh, and that's that's fine that works all great but what about you know can we change that when the mouse moves over it or something you know on hover and that's a, that's something the pseudo classes allow us to do the pseudo class we we specify a keyword after our selector uh, and after a colon so we we'd keep our h2 we still need to have the selector there and then we can refine it using the pseudo class so we do colon and say hover right you can see that background color is no longer being applied because it's only going to be applied now when we hover over. So I move the mouse over and we're getting that applied. So that's a very good example of a pseudo class and you can tell those because we got this single colon um, compared to pseudo elements, which we'll see in a minute have a double colon. Um, right, what are some other good pseudo class ones? Um, we can look at say whether an item is disabled. You can't disable H2s. So let's change this over to a button. And we should have a white background to start because it's enabled. If I add the disabled attribute to our button, that pseudo class will then get applied and we'll get that background color on there. Um, another good one here is uh, focus. So if we have a few buttons. Let me get rid of disabled there. Say we've got three buttons here and we only want to apply it to the button that's got focus. If I click on this one, it will get the focus. I can tab through them um, and tab back and that will just be applied to the item that's got the focus. Um, so those state ones, it's all, the pseudo classes also uh, allow you to do ones where your element is within the structure of the DOM. Um, so we could do something like a last child. We will need to have these wrapped in in a div for this one. Like so, and then we should just see just the last item there getting selected, um, which it has, which is good. Um, so that's that's pseudo classes. Um, yeah, a good few examples of those there. And those, so again, the, those, if we've got our element here, the, the pseudo classes are kind of looking at it from a, a higher level rather than what that type of object is. Now, pseudo elements uh, are the opposite. They're actually looking inside our element. Um, so let's have a look at one of those. If I change this over to a paragraph and we'll just say pseudo elements. Um, and now what we can do is actually get inside um, and look at individual parts of our element. Now, as I said before, it was a single colon for a pseudo class. And that's how you can tell you're using a pseudo class. You can tell you're using a pseudo element when you've got a double colon. Um, so let's have a look. We can do something like first letter. Oh, I'm still on button. Okay, so it needs to be a paragraph. And so now we're getting inside there and we can look at individual and we can do first letter, we could do first line. Uh, there's no first word. Uh, I tried that on the last one, that didn't work. Um, but yeah, there's, so there's a few of these, just need to look at what ones are available. And and these ones you'll, you'll need to, well, you should be using a double colon and that's how you can distinguish between them. When pseudo elements first came out, they used 
a single colon. Um, so you can get away with using a single colon. It'll still work. Um, and you might see that, but syntactically, you should be using a double colon. Um, when pseudo classes came out, they need we wanted that distinction, and, and that was added in, um, but originally it wasn't there. So for pseudo elements, you can get away of using a single or double colon. You should always use a double. Um, but for pseudo classes, you can't. It's got to be single colon. So if I took this back to um, hover, and I hover over, that's not working because you've got to be syntactically correct with pseudo classes. So you need a single colon, and you'll find that then that works again. Um, one other good one for pseudo elements is the after. So we can add some um, content in after an element, like so. And you can see that's popping in there as well. So again, you're operating um, within your paragraph and changing stuff within your element um, with a pseudo element. But a pseudo class, you're looking at it from an outside view and other external factors um, in order to refine, refine your, your selection there. Uh, so there you go, pseudo elements and pseudo classes. Just a quick overview. Hope that was interesting. Uh, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, don't forget to click subscribe as well for future videos. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.